an amazing miracle to kind of live mm. to live in to know that you're living in his house and in his presence mm. and you're eating at his table and you know the provision that he has for you and he wants us to live as families uh loving loving him and learning how to love each other that is the the truth of the kingdom mm. and he's given he's created for all of us you know with Rachel and Tim and the kids and the resort and with you guys and the restaurant and with us here he's created like an environment in which we can live out that truth <laughs> i just think it's amazing so amazing. it really is yes. amazing yes. so um Francis is as uh, been working on me to ha- so that I would have longevity now that there is a grandchild uh, arriving. Oh. So he has taken charge of how much water I drink in a day. Wow! And and uh, and my healthy eating. So <laughs> he bought this huge bottle uh, that has four liters. Okay, it's four liters of water, and oh. I'm instructed to f- drink four liters of <laughs> water a day. Wow. So I get to about three right now. Yeah, I bet you have to go to the bathroom all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So it's really funny, but anyway, so I bought, so I bought, um, uh, I went to go and get myself one of these, uh, so, I, so on the other side, Van is, Gone and gone on to like no plastic. There has to be no plastic in this house because this is something about plastic uh, and it's kind of the, the long term issues around plastic. So I caught between the two of them. So I went to go get myself this water bottle that is not plastic but that will hold kind of enough water. So, awesome. so I was pouring the whole of last week from this big bottle that he bought me into this one liter kind of stainless steel <laughs> and it's called it's the, the mana rage it's called m-a-n-n-a it's just got oh, it so funny yeah. really so wow. i was pouring the water into this bottle every day and every day it would spill over the top and then i tried it and I, I, it would be all over the sink and the floor and then i would when i have to drink a little bit from it and then close the cap <laughs> and it went on the whole week until the, the 23rd when uh the my sound for the day was was um was sound 23 and then i just stopped did when i was reading it because it said oh. my cup oh, bless the Lord. overflows wow Aww. you know Amen. and it was such wow. a picture for me oh. really i thought that is that was a statement that uh you know, because when we read that psalm, we read it all together. Mm-hmm. But that one line, my cup overflows, mm-hmm. is a statement. It's a declaration mm-hmm. by David. And it's when he came out of the valley and when the Lord prepared the table for him. And then he saw the Lord's table prepared for him and he said, my cup overflows Mm. and I just thought about all our lives and the goodness of the Lord and truly you know that statement is so true absolutely Mm. like our cup overflows literally Mm. it's Mm. so amazing in this in this place that he's brought us into Mm. And it's just so much of, uh, you know, joy and peace. And he, sh- he showed me a lot from that psalm, um, which was really amazing. Because if you read, just read the pronouns in that psalm, you'll see. So he switches from, you know, he is mm-hmm. to you are, mm. to I am, and then you are. And he just, it, so you just see the development of the relationship that he has with the Lord through that whole passage of scripture Mm -hmm. and you you see all the the places where God is leading and 
they're just wonderful, like green pastures. My the amplifier says he lets you lay, it lets you lie down on there, like lets you take a break in green pastures, mm-hmm. and leads you, you know, quiet still waters. That's what he does, and then you go to this and you go to that, and he does, uh, you know, he then provides the table, mm-hmm. and then in a full stop, my cup overflows, mm-hmm. and I think that's where we are. We're between the table. And my cup overflows. Oh. Yes. Anyway, that's what I got to share. Oh, my goodness. Mm, thank you. That is so beautiful. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Mm. And if you see, um, if you read, if I'm sure most Bibles will have it from that from Psalm 23 verse 1. You see the references. You get Ezekiel 34 from there, and you get... Uh, Revelation 7 also references to the shepherd and mm. Ezekiel 34 is awesome talking about how he chooses his flock as the shepherd and how he makes them lie down in green pastures. It's amazing wow. that scripture from Ezekiel. So, you know, you just realize that God really is pouring out his love upon us and we, we're getting an understanding of what it's like to be his family and live in his kingdom and walk in his truth and uh, what it must have felt like for the children of Israel, mm-hmm. you know, uh, in Goshen or even in the wilderness, just have this fresh manna from above and flowing water. And mm. Yeah. So that's where we are. So I have, I can make that declaration. My cup over. It's such a blessing to see the Lord, you know, open up scripture like that, you know? Yes. Because, like you said, it's so easy to read it all together. And yes. Yeah. You know, to really make it come to life for us is such a such a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Thank, you. Thank you for sharing that. Well, Miss Renee, do you have any anything specific to share with us? Well, a little bit, a little bit similar because this week I was thinking about a move from South Africa, mm-hmm. and you know, if it had the baby there as opposed to here and just you know how safe and secure and grateful I feel for being here you know and like and what the future you know we've we've chosen a name already oh um (laughs) <laughs> the baby's name um, that um, the Lord gave me is Rafa. Oh, wow. What is so, it? Does, remind me what that means because I, I know the word, but I'm forgetting what um, God who heals? Is it? Oh, sorry. Did Elaine join? She did. Elaine. Hi, Elaine. Uh, Hello, sorry about being late. No, don't be sorry, but Renee has some really special news to share with you real fast. Having a baby. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Uh Congratulations. Thanks. That is so exciting. Isn't it so exciting? (laughs) Thank you. I might have yelled loud enough that Cheryl could hear before she stepped in the cabin. I was like, who is pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't hear me, Elaine. <laughs> anyway. That's so awesome. Yay, isn't it? She was just talking about the name that they, and then I had asked her what it means because I forget what that, so sorry, go ahead. So, you know, um, oh, no, no, you know, the, um, I was so, last year I was learning about the, the names of, of God in the Bible. So Jehovah Rapha, I am the one that healeth thee. So right. healer. Um, mm-hmm. So Rapha, 
R A P H A, but we're not spelling it that way. Mm-hmm. France is going to change the spelling a bit. So whether it's a boy or a girl, mm-hmm. so we're calling the baby Rafa mm. already. <laughs> wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, so exciting. <gasps> hmm. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and so I was just, um, I'm feeling pretty grateful to be in Canada. <laughs> yeah. In uh, with you know just safety and. Um, protection and you know a future mm. for for Rafa mm. and um, you know I'm sure you guys as well even when you were pregnant you you had you know anxiety about a lot of things and so with me the, the major thing initially was um, health stuff mm-hmm. because um, you know, I see it all the time. And so <laughs> there's, a, you know, a million different things that were going through my mind and my heart. And so, I mean, God was so good. He just settled me multiple different occasions with all my anxiety hmm. about all of these things, you know, health-wise. Hmm. And then... Um, in the second trimester, it was kind of, you know, like money and safety and he never failed every single time, you know, in such a kind of timiest manner, like not even, you know, letting me dwell on any of these anxieties just to kind of settle it. Mm-hmm. And, um, today something pretty cool happened i was seeing this patient he's he's 42 and he always comes in with his dad because he's got um like a moderate um intellectual delay so you can call it like you know mentally retarded mm-hmm. and so um i was talking to him to him today and it wasn't a very you know difficult consultation it was just for a prescription renewal Mm -hmm. And so I was talking to his dad and he was just sitting there on the bed and he's got, you know, a lot of different issues. And so he can't really communicate that well with me. But as his dad was talking and just telling me this story about him, uh, the Holy Spirit showed me, he showed me his spiritual or his perfect body. Mm. So I saw him. But I saw him different. So I saw him, he was taller. He was, you know, his facial features changed. It, it, it was just, it was crazy. It was, I mean, it was wonderful. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't say anything to him. But after that, I just, you know, like that child is perfect, mm-hmm. you know. And so that's just with the body, but like spiritually as well, you know, Hmm. just kind of, I was dwelling on it today, like perfection, you know, through Jesus. Hmm. Hmm. And so, yeah. (laughs) Hmm. That's amazing first time that's happened but it's I mean it's pretty amazing it's almost like God is giving us these glasses to see beyond you know uh, what we previously saw the world as like helping us to see things the way he sees things absolutely that's amazing Yeah, it's interesting that you bring that up because when I was thinking about meeting today, I was, I'm assuming the Lord just reminded me and put it on my heart. That prayer, a prayer that you prayed, goodness, it's probably been six months ago. It was when we were, because we, I remember we were in Soon's old house uh, that he lived in prior to this one when we were meeting. Oh, and it was actually when Soon was very sick. Um, oh. And the Lord had given you a vision, Renee, of, and you were praying 
over like the internal parts of the body and uh i don't know if you remember because i because you shared a vision about it afterwards uh after you were praying because basically the lord i think was giving you that vision as you were praying um and it was about the breath of god like the breath god was giving him breath yeah and it it was just talking about like each individual part yeah of the human body and Mm -hmm. of you know and so, I don't know, I just find that interesting that you bring that up again in this way. You know, obviously a different situation, but I just love how the Lord gives you that. <laughs> that, I mean, it makes sense because you, you know, have studied it and you know so much about it and you day in and day out are active in it. But um, I love the spiritual aspect and the beauty uh, of the, the creation of man, mm-hmm. you know, our, our human body is so fragile and so easily hurt and sick and whatever, but it's like you said, and as God showed you, we are perfect in Jesus, you know, Mm. in Christ, we are made perfect. Um, just such a beautiful picture of our spirit, you know, and how Christ sees us. Mm. Um, and I think can, can be seen and understood in so many different levels, even outside of the, perfect outside of the human body but the the soul you know because we can so at least because of trauma and because of so many different things that that a a human or person can go through in life um (laughs) it can make sometimes it difficult you know to to relate or to understand or to deal with um people in life especially even cheryl and elaine and ben and myself and tim included in I'm most certainly sure that in the medical field, I know my dad has had his stories, you know, dealing with people and personalities. And I was teasing Cheryl, I think, was it the other day that, or somebody else that I was saying, Tim is just, yeah, that Tim has told me that I'm not supposed to talk to people when they, (laughs) when they are giving me a hard time for whatever reason. And he's like, you know, maybe you should just let me respond to people let let me go ahead and handle that for you you know because I can have a tendency to be like well now wait a minute hold up just one second you know um but I think the Lord wants us to take a step back you know Mm -hmm. and to see his people you know and those that we interact with you know the way that he does and see him with his eyes Mm. um and I, I think we all get a chance to do that <laughs> in different circumstances and in different situations. So I really appreciate you sharing that. That's that's really a beautiful a beautiful picture of mm. um you know, there's so much travesty in the world even today of those, you know, who don't don't see human life mm. the way that God does and um you know, would say that that is not even worth life, you know, that someone with those issues as the, the, the mm-hmm. patient you're talking about, you know, mm-hmm. that wouldn't even be worth, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, and that obviously, as we all know, is just such a horrible thought. Um, but yeah, that is, that is just such a, a neat way to see mm. how the Lord shows you things, Renee, and, and gives you those pictures. Yeah. It was quite cool because um, uh, he just um, he started laughing. He was laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing, and then you know he, he they left after a while. <laughs> but it just uh, yeah, it was just nice to to see him laugh, and I just Aww. I just thought I figured he knows. You know? yeah. yeah. Right. I know. Like to. Because there, there's so much more like children, yes. you know, it seems. And some of the, I've known a few personally, and they just have such a childlike way of looking at life. And Yes. Yeah. That's... Well, and what an, what an amazing level of the meaning of God being the one who heals us. Mm. Like, even heals the way that we perceive things and... Like, his healing is not always what we expect. Um, 
and not always, I don't know, like on the level that we <laughs> are thinking about, just how he can heal our mind and heal our perception and heal, I don't know, just his healing is so beyond our understanding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for sharing that. Oh, it's a catch up. Hmm. Elaine, do you have anything on your heart that you were just kind of, uh, I know you joined in late. We were just kind of sharing a little bit, and then we're going to spend some time praying together. So I'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Um. I'm honestly pretty spent today, but I've just been really thankful for all the past happening and um, just definitely encouraged with uh, the arrival of spring and like the snow melting and like right. things ramping up over here and just kind of feeling like a freshness and a newness and ready for um, just the new season and all that the Lord would have to to just come to fruition and blossom and so um, just getting ready yeah how's your mom yeah is she any better she's feeling better today yeah oh good, good. thank you hmm yeah, I'm sure it's the same for you guys over there. Um, the Like, the weather is about the same. It's been just so glorious since about first of middle, like, couple days into March. Is it really beautiful there right now, too? Yeah, it's sunny, and um, it's just so it's sunny on most days and cool just the way I like it. And it's not too hot. So, yeah. yeah I've had a lot of sunshine. Yeah, it seems early for that. <laughs> we might still see plenty of rain, but I, I just after that snowstorm and <laughs> it was just crazy over here. I don't know how crazy it got there, but the snow was really troublesome to say the least. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard, but the Cochrans were completely snowed into their house. They couldn't get out for like a full week, I think. I mean, their cars, it snowed all the way up to the top of their cars. So... And it was the week that Granny's restaurant was supposed to open. <laughs> but nobody, I mean, it looked like another planet at Granny's. Like, you couldn't even get your car into the parking lot. So, Tim had to literally buy a tractor so that we could shovel snow. A bunch of the guys, Ben, uh, Soon, and Brad, and some of us, the, my kids, were going over there and shoveling off the rooftops because they were flat roofs. So... It was crazy mid-February, so it does, it just seems like such a blessing from the Lord <laughs> these last couple of weeks in this, this glorious weather, so. And before summer, when it gets like kind of crazy, my life gets really insane in the summer. When it's beautiful, that's what keeps me going. I feel like the Lord just gives me that little, like every night I come and watch the sunset as much as I can in the summer because it's just so beautiful and my day has been so full, so I'm really appreciating these really beautiful days before my head is spinning so no oh, bummer i think oh that's uh speaking of granny's over at the restaurant and where elaine is they don't get the best connection of oh, internet man. so hopefully um, maybe she can rejoin oh i hope so i think she's having a hard time connecting hmm did you have anything else to, to I share? wish y'all could all be in this cute little cabin that I'm in. I've never mm -hmm. even been in here. It's adorable. I, I tried to come down to a cabin even though my kids are all gone. But um, I never know. Our house is just kind of a weird setup. So, But I really just, would, you know, as much as the Lord allows, love to, to be here as much as possible. Because it, well, maybe in the cabin or not. But, um, you know, in our times just to kind of get away and... Um, and enjoy each other with the beautiful view and this this location. So, so yeah, we're down in a cabin over here. That's can they see a video? Like, can you? Would a video work? 
I don't know. We'll give it a shot before so the light goes out. Oh my goodness. <coughs> Let's see. Here's the sh oh, it's kind of dark. Can you see Cheryl? I don't know if it's coming through. Do you guys see? Uh, this is. Oh, oh, it's very pretty. You, how close are you guys to the water? Y'all are pretty close to the water, right? No, not really. Oh, yeah. Where we are now, more like in the suburbs. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, it's we don't have electricity down here, so can you see my propane lamp? <laughs> that's as much. That's the light uh, we get in here. So. Oh, I envy that. It's it's that really fun down here. Speed. It's lovely. I didn't know what kind of internet I was gonna get down here, so we'll we'll see how long it lasts. So far, so good. So far, so good. Yeah. I know. The hot spot's working. <clears throat> It's so really is. It's adorable. I love it. Y'all need to come stay with me. I know. Maybe y'all can have a baby moon here, Renee. Aww. <laughs> but you'll have to bring the baby. I'm trying to convince Francis about a baby moon. He had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a new thing. Aww. <laughs> That's funny. Mm -hmm. I think for me, I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, in a season, I think Prima, what God showed to you is so, um, expressing my heart right now, but also, um, in that, in that place of just feeling blessed and cared for by the Lord, it's kind of a new level for me of reframing my prayers and my, um, <clears throat> When I'm talking to people about what's going on, what God is doing, um, speaking things in a way that shows my faith in him, for example, um, instead of saying, while I'm praying, I'm even talking about like how I speak to the Lord. Like he's like reframing my phraseology. For example, um, one of my daughters right now is struggling with a, um, a hang up of biting her fingernails and we've kind of been up and down with it. Um, you know, at one point she had very clear, she had a visitation from the Lord about it. And he said that he, he's made her the winner and she's four. So, um, she said, I saw Jesus last night and he said he made me the winner. We were talking about, you know, why, why does she feel compelled to bite her fingernails and what a bad habit it is, how dirty it is and how she doesn't want to do it, but she's still doing it. And you know, as a mom, kind of like walking through that, like, okay, how big of a deal should I make this? Should I like, you know, make this everything? Should I ignore it? Should, you know, um, parenting is full of those sorts of uh, processes with the Lord, which is wonderful. Um, but, you know, I, we're in this, I'm in this place again of frustration. And so, sorry, I'm having, taking a long time to come around circle, full circle here. But <laughs> as I, as I'm praying to the Lord about this, instead of, saying to him like, oh God, you know, please, please deliver her from this or, um, please give me wisdom on how to walk through this. Like he's having me phrase it to him and like, I'm looking forward to your timing Lord and how you will deliver her from this struggle. Like, you know, give me peace in the process until the moment when you bring resolve, um, and, and and show me how you're going to bring victory, you know, to her and to me at, through this struggle. And so it, like, seems minute. I don't know if that really even makes sense, but um, it's in many different spheres of our lives. Here's another example. For the cafe, um, right now, we, we're starting to get busier and busier, which is a positive thing. That's wonderful. Um, but with the rise in business and with the expanding of our schedule coming up this next month, Ben and I are just literally physically not going to be able to do every second of what needs to be done. We need some other people working with us. And I felt pretty protective about who we hire. And um, right now we have just a really pure core of people. Noah and Naomi are in there helping us sometimes. And Elaine is in there helping us sometimes. And um, then Ben and I, of course, and then there's another gal named Maddie, a little teenager, and she's so sweet. She's really open and just positive, and um, the Lord's given me some really special moments with her just to speak into her, and um, so I just love her already, and um, 
just with the kids being there and everything, I just feel so guarded about who we bring in to the mix. And, um, you know, someone's attitude, their posture can be so poisonous to, um, to a whole dynamic as a crew and as a team and as a family, which is how I really see it. And anyway, so Ben and I have been, you know, praying earnestly about who to hire and how to find those people and just asking the Lord to bring those people along. And he's really changed my prayers, um, even over the last few days of just like, you know, Lord, protect us from what will poison and Lord, bring us the right people to, oh God, I can't wait to see how you're going to fulfill this need. Like I'm so joyful about the people that you'll bring and just knowing that I can trust you and what you'll do. And, um, I don't know, it's just this shift in my, I guess, expectation kind of going from like needy and begging to like the posture of eagle versus chicken totally totally yeah Mm -hmm. I don't know and just like seeing him reframing my thoughts Mm -hmm. and rephrasing my prayers Mm -hmm. has just been kind of amazing and and so encouraging Mm -hmm. like the first couple of times it came out that way I was like oh yeah that's different Amen. Like, <laughs> just when you see the spirit working in those places that are so invisible, um, and then you see the change he's bringing forth, I'm just really grateful and excited. And, um, and it makes me want to pray all the more, you know, just to hear him coming out of my own heart and to see that work and the changing of I don't know, just my heart of faith. I feel like he's just giving me a greater measure of faith. And and I'm able to pray. I don't know. I feel like when I express it that way, it, it seems more shallow than what it is. But anyway, if that makes sense, hmm. I'm grateful and, and encouraged. Hmm. That's good. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, the Lord obviously... <laughs> works in in each individual circumstance and what Mm. what he's as Prima was saying you know he's put us each one in this place by his hand you know Mm -hmm. if you think about Mm -hmm. going after something as we even were accustomed to doing our whole lives you know like trying to achieve a certain goal or to do a certain thing but when we see that that the Lord has literally hand placed us somewhere you know um it doesn't mean that it's not, and I can obviously personally say, <laughs> it doesn't mean that I don't still get all tied up or frustrated or fearful or whatever in a circumstance. But, you know, then when we go right back to the fact that the Lord put us here in the first place, you know, yeah, and absolutely. as you said, you know, to be able to to even see him shift our perspective, you know. Yeah. I... You know, in preparing for the physically preparing, but also emotionally and spiritually preparing for Noah and Tem to leave for Africa. Um, the whole, like literally the whole two weeks before. And if you guys get a chance to listen to Tim's um, and Noah's testimony, it should be recorded. I don't know if it's ready yet or edited yet, but they just gave, you know, a good testimony of their trip uh last Tuesday, so a week ago, um, and I think it should be recorded, but I probably heard more in that re- testimony then than I even did personally once, because they had already been back probably like five days or so, um, but I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, sorry, so before they left, you know, I mean, even in talking to you, Prima, probably a month before they left, and just in what the Lord has revealed, you know, even through other circumstances and hearing from you guys. I mean, I know South Africa and Africa are two different places, very far apart. Mm -hmm. Um, But just in general, you know, just kind of knowing certain things and by my own made up knowledge mostly, but, you know, not by experience by any means. Um, But, you know, there was definitely some thoughts that went through my head um, for Tim and, of course, my child to be that far away and even some of the logistics of like what vaccinations to get and you know just all the stuff um you know 
uh, what I was trying to say is three weeks before they even left is when all the snow stuff happened and the restaurant was supposed to open and you know Tim's goal with leaving in March was to have the restaurant kind of on its feet and going before he left so he wasn't just all like you guys do good I'll see you in 10 days you know because basically that's what happened <laughs> um but you know he couldn't be helped you know so it was just so many things were going on uh before he even packed up to leave um that there was hardly any time to think about what was actually happening. So then all that, you know, probably a few days before, I was like, okay, you guys are, you guys are actually going to go. <laughs> and I had, I think I can, I can truly say that I had the first experience for myself of peace mm. that was not conjured up mm. by thought or by idea it literally, like, I was so peaceful that I was uncomfortable with it. Does that even make sense? <laughs> yeah. Like, I was so much at peace that I was like, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> this isn't me. Like, mm. there is literally nothing within my makeup mm. or my ways of thinking or feeling about any sort of anything. Because it wasn't just about the fact that they were going to Africa. It was like... With all the stuff going on and everything, you know, with the restaurant and with whatever, you know, circumstantially and so much more over the last year and a half that's gone through my mind in life, I have not felt this peace wow. ever. Like, mm -hmm. I can literally say I've never felt it before. Mm -hmm. And it was so intense and so real that it mm -hmm. was supernatural, I guess, is really the, <laughs> the mm -hmm. only word I can come up with. And it was funny because I say that. It was like I literally felt uncomfortable with it. Like, I'm like, <laughs> this is crazy. You know, I didn't feel out unpeaceful about it, but yeah. I was just like, this isn't yeah. me. Um, so that was a huge blessing, you know, just to – and then even while Tim was gone, there were, you know, little things that I could have imagined could have gone wrong that I can't handle without Tim. Like, mm -hmm. and honestly, there's nobody else I even know. Yeah. You know, God bless my dad, but he's not capable of doing certain things. Yeah. And the only person that is lives in Texas yeah. sort of thing. You yeah. know, Tim's yeah. dad. Because he literally said, do you think I should just tell my dad? Should I? Well, no, Tim Sr. said, do you think I should come and stay there like while you're gone? Are you <laughs> thinking? We're like, I think it'll be okay. <laughs> but God was so faithful in wow. all the things, Amen. you know. Like Amen. this is going to sound like a really little thing, but this refrigerator right here. Yeah. Also, we don't have... Uh, electricity in these cabins and so we had to get a new fridge and one of them needs to be like a very small amount of it has to be run on a battery so it has to be switched out well of course we didn't have time for Tim to show me how to switch it out yeah before he left but people have an expectation to have a refrigerator when they rent a place yeah and it goes out about every three days well he got a chance to show Elijah but he didn't get a chance to show me and so Literally, I checked it every day to see, like, okay, you know, I've got to be on top of that. Yeah. It never went out. Whoa. Like, it didn't go out while Tim Aww. was gone, you know? And Thank so, you, for me, it was just, like, it's, again, a Provision. very small thing. But, and it was all that way, all week long, mm. you know? Like, everything just went so smoothly. Yeah. And yeah. the Lord just, over and over again, was all that I needed, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I think he wanted to show me that and is continuing to show me that in many ways. Um, Amen. but that's just one, you know, kind of small thing that the peace, you know, that the Lord, even in so many new things and exciting, it's not like it's even, a other than it's a lot of things, you know, on top and, and Tim had a lot of revelation and, uh, new things came up in Africa um, so our family's stepping into even another, uh, endeavor, endeavor in business and in relationship. And, um, but it's, it doesn't, for me, it doesn't mean that there's not some, like my soul wants to get all kind of like, Oh man, what's going on? Um, but it comes with excitement and joy, you know, in what the Lord is doing, um, in our family and by family, I mean, all of us, you know, mm -hmm. like, um, you know, Cheryl said that about business and those that come in, obviously, to your day-to-day -day environment mm -hmm. and become your family. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you know, the Lord has so hand-placed each one of us mm -hmm. in each other's lives. You know, it's just such a beautiful thing. And I was actually just praying for about it this afternoon. Like, what a blessing. Um, 
And I feel like I'm so sad Elaine's not with us, but I know that's a part of, I think, I believe Elaine would share about even the endeavors that she's very busy and she's, you know, her mom's sick and her mom does a lot of the help, helping with the hotel, um, but she's kind of having to step in because Katie got uh, some as upper respiratory stuff. Um, <clears throat> but I know it's just a blessing for all of us to be able to, to work together, you know, Absolutely. and to do do life more together than even before, you know, so for sure, I can definitely relate Prima to, to what the Lord showed you, um, in Psalm 23. And I'm, did you say it was Ezekiel 34? Cause I want to, I forgot my, oh yes, please do. It's 34 in It says, for thus says the Lord God, behold, I myself, I'll search for my flock and seek them out. And the shepherd cares for his sheep on the day that he is among his scattered flock. So I will care for my sheep and I will rescue them from all the places to which they were scattered. And I love this line. It says, on a cloudy and gloomy day. Mm. Wow. Amen. <laughs> I will I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries and bring them to their own land. Hmm. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the streams and in all the inhabited places of the land. I will feed them in a good pasture and their grazing ground will be on the mountain heights of Israel. Hmm. There they will lie down on good grazing ground and feed in rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock and will let them lie down, says the Lord God. Mm. I mean, it's just so amazing, right? Mm. Mm. It's so amazing that he, 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 he says he sought us out and that he brought us into this place mm. where he can provide for us and put us on good grazing ground and, mm. and care for us. Mm. And we will be in good pastures. If we all look at our lives where we started off from Mm. and how he has slowly but surely brought us to this place Mm. where we rely on him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just want to also tell Shiva while Shiva was talking, the Lord reminded me that Van has been going on about like the definition of faith and how it's about believing God. Mm. Um, and she gave me a scripture yesterday, I couldn't find it, I was looking for it in John, where Jesus says, the work of the kingdom is to believe God. Wow. Mm. It's mm. a scripture in John. Wow. That's what Jesus said. He said, the work of the kingdom is to believe. Mm. Mm. That's it. Mm. You know, so I think that, you know, the way the Lord is retraining you to speak mm. uh, or to pray, you know, is, is to bring you to that place, mm. you know, uh, believing that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. Awesome. And so the perspective or the mindset is, uh, you know, because Jesus was very clear with his disciples too. He said, you, you don't ask, that's why you don't have. <laughs> yeah. Mm. You know, because yeah. so much of our stuff gets uh, challenged around the steps before we even get to the place where we think we have the right to ask and all, you know, the stuff that we struggle with in our humanity. Mm. But Jesus was, you know, he, he taught his disciples over and over again that, uh, you know, his desire was that the disciples would know him. Mm-hmm. And that they would believe in him. He kept asking them that, you know, who do you say I am? Do you believe me? Do, do you believe me? So, mm-hmm. and, and then at one stage, I wish I could find that scripture, he said, um, the work is to believe him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so, I think he's got us all on the right path mm-hmm. to believe him. As you were sharing that, the Lord revealed to me that this very process is an answer to a prayer that I've had, which is 
to bring bring any areas of my life that are out of order in the kingdom into order. <laughs> so thank you so much for sharing that because, you know, he showed me while you were just speaking just now that he's bringing that area of my life into order as I asked him to. <laughs> thank you, Lord. <laughs> Father, we thank you so much, Lord, that Lord, that you have such a perfect plan, Lord. such a perfect way, Lord, that as we give up of ourselves, Lord, as we lay down the life that we thought we wanted, Lord, the life that the ideals and the ways that that pleased our soul, Lord, or that, um, that came from a wrong understanding. Lord, as we lifted you up, Lord, as we put you first in our lives, as we desire you above all other things, to know you, to hear you, to see you, to touch you, to smell your presence, Lord, your fragrance, Lord, to worship your holy name. Father, that you so freely and so willingly give us the desires of our hearts. Yeah. That you put so perfectly into place. And so rightly into order. Your perfect way. Yeah. All the details and all things big and small or that we can even sometimes miss mm -hmm. the things that you're doing around us Lord I pray that as we are each one seeing you in in all things Lord we're filling a bottle with water we're <laughs> we're sitting down with a patient like we have done many times before we're we're praying Lord we we want to pray right Lord we want to we want to trust you in all yes, things, Lord. even sending our people overseas, even mm -hmm. taking a plate to a table, Lord, mm -hmm. uh, changing sheets on a bed, Lord, all the mm -hmm. things that we do in this life, mm -hmm. on this planet, Lord, in our physical body, Lord, we can do it for your glory. We mm -hmm. can do it to praise your name. Mm -hmm. We can do it because you have laid it out for us to do. And you will continue as we continue to seek you, mm -hmm. as we continue to lay our lives down before you, God. Mm -hmm. You will make every path straight. Mm -hmm. You will lead us every step of the way, Father. We praise your holy name. Lord. We thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness in our lives, Lord. I thank you for the sweet baby Rafa, Lord. Mm -hmm. For this beautiful spirit Lord that you have created that you've known so long ago I love the idea that that before this world was ever created you knew us and we are each one so excited to get to meet uh, this precious soul and I'm so blessed and excited uh, by the life of Renee and Francis and Prima and Van and Jess Lord I thank you for that family mm -hmm. I just lift them up to you right now as they are um, just in such a beautiful season with you, mm -hmm. Father. Uh, just what a what a joyful picture in the in the actual presence, Lord, of of a new life. Um, and so I thank you for this new life that you are bringing to their family. You. And I thank you, God, for how you will unify them and bring them together in this season. Um, and Lord, as I know they each one know and are praying, Lord, I just pray you. Fill it with joy. Mm. Fill it with blessings overflowing, Lord. In each and every detail, I thank you that 
that Renee is feeling well, Lord, and um, that you are walking with her through every step uh, of the, the pregnancy. She can see how you are teaching her mm. um, to let go of all fear, Lord, you. to trust you in all things, mm. to know that you are our perfect healer, Father. Lord, I thank you for your life mm. in Rafa, Lord. I thank you for the blessing that this child is to all of us. Mm -hmm. I know it will be such a blessing to their family, Lord, but I believe that this life will be a blessing to all of us. Thank and you. I thank you for it. I thank you for Cheryl, and I thank you for the beautiful thing that you are doing within her life, within her children's life, within Ben's life, Lord. I pray that you will continue to give them strength, as they rest in you, Lord, even through busyness and uh, newness, Lord, I pray that that you will uh, just give them your strength and your power in Jesus' name, Lord, as they lay all things down and rest in you and know that you are in control, Father. And I know that is on so many different levels and details, Lord, and so I just lift them up to you, Lord, and thank you for their lives. Uh, thank you for their willingness to serve and to be your hands and your feet, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing within their family. And I pray that you would continue to, to unify all of us, Lord, through this new journey that you've put us on. Mm -hmm. I lift up Elaine to you right now. I pray that you as well would give uh, her rest, mm -hmm. uh, that she would rest in you, Father. She is young and she has much energy, Lord, but I pray that she would not uh, get too spread out. Lord, I pray that her heart would also, Father, be full of joy and that her eyes would be open to you, Lord, and to, to see the good work that you are doing through your people, um, through the people that she meets, Lord, and through the work that she so joyfully does each and every day. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray that you would bless her heart, her mind, and mm -hmm. her spirit. I do lift up Katie to you right now. I pray that you would touch her, Lord, that you would heal her body. Thank you, Jesus. That you would take away any illness, um, any sickness. Lord, she has as well been such a blessing. The, the hard work that she's put in over the last few weeks, Father, I just pray um, that you would give her your strength and your might in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you so much, God, for what... Um, a beautiful opportunity it is, Lord, to, to be with your people, Lord, to be with your sons, or to, to hear the life that lives within each one here, the, the beautiful spirit that you've put in each one of these sisters, God, I pray. I pray for even more, Lord, I pray mm -hmm. that as you have so abundantly filled our cups to overflowing, Lord, that we would not go a second without proclaiming that truth, mm. that the richness of your love, your faithfulness, your, your patience with us, Lord, the joy that you give us, Lord, you give it to overflowing, Father. Thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness in our lives. I pray for each one of my sisters this this next few weeks before we are able to meet again, Lord, I pray that that each one is um, even given a new revelation of who you are, mm. for what um, for what you're doing around us and in us and through us, Lord. Mm. Each may each one be blessed. Mm. Pray these things in your precious name. Thank you.
Father, we're so grateful and joyful in you, in who you are, who you have been to us, Lord, and who you will be. Lord, beyond us, God, for, for who you are. We honor you, Lord, and stand in awe again at your personal, intimate love at your Holy Spirit, at work, even in us. Lord, indeed, what a blessing to gather like this. Thank you, Lord, for bringing your people together again, Lord, because we know you're in our midst in such a special way when you gather us, Lord, in your name. So we just honor you and worship you, Lord, and thank you. God, and join just our hearts together in love and just corporate worship, Lord, and in the sweet fullness of how you manifest yourself, Lord, when you bring your people together. Father, we believe in you with our whole hearts. As your disciples said, you alone have the truth, and who else do we go after? We thank you that you opened our eyes to see you, opened our ears to hear you, gave us ears to hear, gave us eyes to see. And Lord, we ask you for hearts that will believe yes. in the moment, yes. every moment. We thank you, Lord, that we will yield our own thoughts, our own ways, our own assessments, our own judgments of things. Mm -hmm. You said, without faith, it's impossible to please you. Mm. And our hearts truly, truly want to please you, Father. Yes, yes, so we set aside our own understanding. And we choose, Father, today to see as you see, and mm. hear as you hear, mm. and believe with our whole heart. But we, we look at how you believed. So you came, Jesus, and you died believing, mm. having faith that you would bring with you a multitude to present to your Father. So how do we just come to that same place of, of believing you? Mm -hmm and trusting you mm -hmm. and knowing that your way is best. Mm -hmm. We look at so many, Lord, who have never heard you, never seen you, mm -hmm. don't know you. And our hearts are filled with so much of gratitude that you sought that, that you came and you sought us out as your flock. And you brought us and placed us in a place where we could lie down 
where we could feel on the best, mm. where we could be at peace, where we could be in rest. How wonderful is your love for us, Father? Mm-hmm. How wonderful is your grace and your mercy towards us? Mm-hmm. Our hearts are truly overflowing with joy. Lord, we set aside our own understanding and knowledge of things, mm-hmm. our own estimation by what we see and what we hear as humans. And Lord, we trust you and we believe in you mm-hmm. and we believe you. We lay down every other thing in our lives so that we could come to the fullness mm-hmm. of believing you and having faith in you in the moment, every step of the way. Yes. And we will see your heart sing with joy. Lord, we believe that your promise was that our joy would be made full and complete. Mm -hmm. That you have wanted to delight us. And you have wanted to fill our hearts with abundant joy, abundant life. This is your will for us. Mm -hmm. To lie down, to rest to feed on pastures you've provided. How wonderful is your love for us, Lord. We're just so grateful. Mm-hmm. Bless mm-hmm. each one of us, Lord, in our individual lives and with our families. Mm-hmm. Every moment of the day, let our thoughts be on you. Help us, Lord, but to practice your presence wherever we are. Mm-hmm. Be cognizant and aware every moment that we walk before you, that your eyes see us, that we are visible to you. Mm-hmm. And Lord, we pray for your healing that comes to every one of our lives. Mm-hmm. Where there is anything that is out of order, we thank you that it comes into order today. Mm-hmm. Your light flows, your abundant life flows, your joy flows, your peace flows. There is provision, there is protection, there is shelter, there is a table. And there is a cup that runneth over. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Mm. Thank you. I saw a vision tonight um, while Auntie Prima was talking about um, Psalm 23 and it doesn't um, completely click or come together until you read Ezekiel 34. Mm-hmm. So when you were reading Psalm 23, I saw, I thought it was like an angel in the sky and he was running around in circles very fast, like, you know, the flash Mm-hmm. That okay. superhero <laughs> movie mm-hmm. series thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looked like that, and so he was running around in circles, and um, I could see so just very like like a, like a flash, right? So just kind of like flashes of him, and he was reaching for a staff in in front of him, mm-hmm. and so he was doing this in the clouds, round and round and round in a circle. And below that was a green field. And so I, um, when you read um, in Ezekiel, um, sorry, I'm just trying to find it. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so I will look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. Mm. And um, it was so amazing to me because of my preconception of the shepherd, you know, my idea of, of Jesus as, you know, a good shepherd, but also he's powerful, mm. mm-hmm. like a superhero. 
and he's saving, he's rescuing, he's, you know, kind of going at super speed and kind of getting us sorted so that we are able to rest and enjoy his peace and hmm. and his goodness and sit and feast and love on him. Hmm. So Father, I just I just thank you for your blessed assurance. Your blessed assurance, your blessed assurance. I thank you that you are the ultimate shepherd in every way. You are more than the word shepherd in everything that you do for us. Just so grateful for your love mm -hmm. and your amazing grace that just permeates every facet of our lives. Thank you for letting us be part of your flock. Thank you. And just hold us forever in your hand. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, bless the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord.